for going ins. If you knew we had a uh, time limit on the read through of Ulysses, it was going to end in April. I just waved my magic wand and we're having no time limit on this now, Ulysses 2020. So feel free to join in my uh, boxer link below. Hit me up and I'll uh, get you in the group. Let's try to unpack this now. Episode 8, Lestragonians. The Homeric um, correspondence here is cannibalism. Uh, Odysseus was on a, the island and the cannibals were trying to eat him and all that, so you don't really need it for Ulysses, but it is a scaffolding of the book. So Bloom is going to eat at Davy Burns. I'm, I have a menu from Davy Burns. I'll get it and show it up around here. But first he goes to... Well, first let's start at the beginning, shall we? We have him walking around. He he runs into... Well, there's a, a I-N-R-I, Iron Nails ran in. As we progress through this book, as other novels do, you'll notice he's referring to things that happened before and he's off in the future a lot too and the episodes are going to get busier and busier with more action more characters um things like that so bloom's walking around um thinking a lot as he's apt to do he runs into simon Dedalus's daughter um at an auction room on we're at page 124 and it goes on to 125. He talks about how Simon is selling the furniture for money. Simon's uh, an alcoholic. He's got 15 kids. Uh, his wife has recently died, Stephen's mother. And he really feels for Dilly. At line uh, 65, there's a, a Shakespeare reference uh, to Hamlet, which we'll get into the next uh, episode greatly, but Hamlet, I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain time to walk the earth. Well, he gets that wrong. It's doomed to, uh, for a certain time to walk the night, actually. And Bloom gets a throwaway, a flyer, from someone handing out flyers, and he buys a some uh, biscuits for a penny, and he throws them down on the gulls. So we're getting, Bloom is concerned about other people, he's concerned about animals, and this is manna from the gods, like the Old Testament. He's an ad man, so he's walking along. We have, you can uh, trace his path through Dublin on a map if you want. We have this Heelys, H-E-L-Y-S, people wearing uh, these shirts, like uh, clapboards and that, and advertisement. Bloom thinks about how he used to have an ad there, and what a good ad it'd be, how better it could be. He's uh, constantly thinking about business opportunities, inventions, things like that. At the bottom of 170, or 127, he thinks of uh, Millie, his daughter, back uh, when they were a kid, and Molly had a uh, nice dress. He's thinking about the past here, and when he was happier, he was in happy days. We're about to come across one of the, one of the, uh, I think one of the greatest love scenes uh, written. It's uh, the first time um, Molly and, and Bloom made love. They lost the virginity together. I might read a bit of that. I wish I would have used it in Brian's sex and literature tag. Um, Instead, I used one in another uh, coming episode, uh, Gertie McDowell on the Beach, which is a, a good little sex scene as well. On page 128, uh, second paragraph, well, I'm sorry, uh, third, one, two, three, fourth paragraph, Barty Darcy, uh, the tenor, he was in the story The Dead in Dubliners. I reiterate, a really good end to Ulysses is not the portrait of the artist as a young man, it's Dubliners. Many characters from Dubliners are in Ulysses. He runs into a Mrs. Breen. Now, 
Bloom and Mrs. Breen, I forget her maiden name, but they had a, uh, a previous relationship, actually, and Bloom was quite fond of her. But she's talking about, sees Bloom wearing black, asks if he's in mourning, you know, for uh, someone in his family. He goes, oh no, it was uh, Patty uh, Dignam. But at the bottom around, let's see, 251, she talks about a nightmare that her husband had where the ace of spades is walking up the stairs. And Bloom thinks, indigest, period, meaning indigestion, maybe he ate something. It's a chapter on eating. Uh, no, she takes out a postcard that has UP up. UP up. Now, you're probably wondering, uh, WTF does that mean? Does it mean uh, urinating while you're standing up, or what kind of insult is that? She talks about how it upset her husband, and he's all up in arms about it. He's, he's might do uh, legal action. UP up is slang for uh, your number is up, your time is up. It, it was actually used in Oliver Twist, but that's what uh, that means. So it is a threatening postcard, and on the next page, 131, you see it again, U period, P colon up, and uh, Bloom's thinking, well, it was probably from Alf Bergen or Richie Goulding. These characters are minor, but they do reappear. He gets on to thinking of Martha's letter. Here's, uh, he's, we're getting into more detail about that letter, remember? Uh, and here, at line 326, we get the first ad that Bloom put in the paper, wanted smart lady typist to aid gentlemen in literary work. And he's thinking about her replies. She has replied now twice. The letter that we see in Lotus Eaters is the second reply from Martha. Tell me who made the world. Now... We don't know, is that a typo? Is it not? In Random House Edition, it's when they re, they have re, Bloom rethinking about it, is tell me who made the word. But Bloom thinks in the Gabler Edition, there's a lot of uh, critical essays on this in the Jim Joyce Quarterly. I, um, I think I'll link one below. It's, um, it's these curious things that Joyceans like to debate about. There's no right or wrong answer. We have, in the same paragraph, another me mention of A.E., George Russell. Now, Russell did publish Joyce's first short stories. But in here with Stephen, Joyce's alter ego, they're going to meet next episode with him and uh, A.E., we have a not-so-close relationship. I think uh, Joyce had a, a falling out with A.E. in real life. Reference Martha's letter. It's at uh, 5, episode 5, line 240. Well, he's also thinking about Mrs. Prufroy, the uh, pregnant lady who's in the hospital. We're going to have an episode entirely about that coming up. On page 133... Uh, the paragraph that starts at line 439, nasty customers to tackle, Jack Power, could a tale unfold, father a G-man, this isn't um, a G-man like in America, American pulp crime fiction, a G-man means government man. More uh, Mrs. Uh, Prufoy, how... Uh, childbirth is, uh, you know, back then women uh, died in childbirth uh, quite often and had stillborn babies quite often. And Bloom wants, uh, really thinks something should be done about that. Page 134, line 441, Corny Kelleher, remember he was the undertaker at Patty Dignam's funeral in the Hades episode. 
James Stevens. He's a, he was uh, mentioned in episode three. Uh, Stephen met James Stephen in, in Paris. Stevens. More Parnell, Arthur Griffith. The Arthur Griffith started uh, the Finian movement in Ireland, uh, Home Rule. Home Rule Sun rising up in the Northwest. Here we have the last paragraph. His smile faded as he walked, a heavy cloud hiding the sun slowly shadowing Trinity's surly front, Trinity College, uh, the cloud going, going by. Page 135, uh, Charles Parnell's brother is walking around. There's a lot of uh, interior monologue about that. Simon Dedalus. Yeah, Bloom's remembering Simon Dedalus talking about meeting uh, uh, John Parnell. And uh, John Parnell is uh, riding a bicycle. Beard and bicycle. Talking about coincidences. Here we have some more George Russell. A.E. Theosophical Society, uh, McGregor Mathers was uh, in that, The Golden Dawn. So was W.B. Yates. Another mention of, uh, to aid gentlemen in literary work. We have Martha throughout this. I'm going to continue just to um, point it out. Now, everything is not historically correct in here. For example, at the bottom of 136, there will be a total eclipse this year, autumn sometime. Actually, that was in September of 1904, and it wasn't even seen in Dublin. I always uh, like this line about, he faced about, standing between the awnings, held out his right hand at arm's length towards the sun to block it out. Uh, there's a neat reference in Circe, the, the play in here, where uh, I think it's Bloom or someone Blots out the sun. Hard to do on stage. Bloom is uh, getting overwhelmed and getting depressed, thinking about Blaze's uh, coming at 4 uh, p.m. today to um, visit Molly. People have been bringing this up all the time. Like, uh, well, what's Molly up to? Uh, I heard she's getting a show. What's up with that? Who's getting it up? <laughs> and, uh, Bloom just goes, oh, no, no, he's got a mustard feeling on his heart at uh, line 592. Stop, stop. If it was, it was, must. Again, Bloom is just letting things happen, which is good in a way to live one's life. We really have no control over other people whatsoever. He's thinking, I was happier then. Or was that I? Or am I now I? 28 I was. She 23. Not yet. We're getting to it. He's thinking about the lotion that he left in uh, Sweeney's Pharmacy where he got the lemon soap. Um, uh, you can keep track of what's in Bloom's pocket. He, pockets. He's got the letter. He's got the soap. He's got a potato. Finally, he goes, he's hungry. He goes into the Burton restaurant where men, men, men see animals feed. And it's just a, uh, I have UGH, U-G-H here, the uh, descriptions of men eating and that. Bloom is a uh, very neat eater. He's a uh, culinary eater. He likes, he likes um, things a particular way. He likes to eat with relish. So, uh, on page 139, he's uh, looking about, he raises two fingers, and uh, he, print, he pretends to uh, see somebody as an excuse to leave, and he's out of there. Out! I hate dirty eaters. Eat or be eaten. Kill, kill, kill. He's, he starts thinking about the free soup kitchens in Dublin. Bloom's a very temperate eater. Um... Now, he's not a, uh, a TT, what they call in Dublin a teetotaler, meaning someone who doesn't drink alcohol at all, but he's a temperate drinker. Ah, I'm hungry, line 
731, and he enters Davy Burns' Moral Pub, a much better place where people have manners with over nosy Flynn. He thinks of, um, sees an ad for potted meat. What is home without plum trees, potted meat, incomplete? And what a stupid ad under the obituary notices they stuck it. So, in a way, potted meat, to pot one's meat, is a sexual reference. But here he's also thinking about, in the Hades episode, all the, uh, the rats feeding on corpses. And to put uh, potted meat under an obituary is like uh, uh, corpses and bodies and coffins are so much potted meat. He thinks of a, a little uh, song with the N-word in it, so it's a racist little ditty, but he's relating cannibalism to sexual potency, which goes back to uh, the Homeric episode as well. He thinks of uh, famished ghosts, the famine in Ireland started around 18, or, yeah, 1840. Now, Nosey Flynn is a interesting character. He's uh, got a constant runny nose. Um, at one point, some of his, Bloom thinks uh, one of his snots is going to fall into his beer. Luckily, he sniffs it up. But he, he brings, brings up Bolin again. Line 7, 73. Oh, oh, that's a style. Who's getting it up? At this point, everybody knows. That's like the second or third time that line's been used. Who is it was telling me? Isn't it Blaze's Bowling mixed up in it? A warm shock of air, heat of mustard, haunched on Mr. Bloom's heart. Time going on. Hands moving. Two. Not yet. Talks about barroom clocks being five minute fast. We always have the references of time in Ulysses. And time really starts to go now. Here we have another one of my favorite things in Ulysses. The uh, uh, continuing uh, joke is were about the gold cup race. Now the gold cup race was a horse race that did occur on June 16, 1904 in Dublin. And you remember, oh, is it, it, yeah, it has to be in Calypso, where Bloom's going to throw away his newspaper. He gives it to Bantam Lyons and says, oh, no, it's a throwaway. That's the tip that Bantam Lyons wins the, the race on, because throwaway was the underdog. No pun intended, of the horse race who won. He beat Spectre, who was a favorite. And Blaze's bowl and bet on Spectre. This is all coming up. Lenahan on page uh, 143 also bet on, on Spectre and lost. On page 144 in the middle, we have the, uh, the law of the sex scene I'm talking about. I'll let you read it for yourself. It's uh, Bloom thinking about how things were, with uh, how passionate they were between him and Molly, and then uh, me and me now. Bloom is having quite an identity crisis. It's going to come up in the Wandering Rocks episode with Gertie McDowell, and Bloom's going to write on the, uh, uh, be the beach, uh, a question. He's also throughout this, he's thinking of uh, the Keys ad. He's thinking about uh, uh, Haynes and how Haynes owns, a, owes him three bob, owes him money. He's keep, he keeps track, meticulous, keeps meticulous notes of, of things, how much he owes, how much people owe him, this and that. On page 145, we get a description of uh, Bloom when Bloom leaves the room. Nosey Flynn is talking to Davy Byrne about, uh, is he in the craft, he said. That uh, means uh, the Freemasons. 
we hear how uh, Bloom uh, stands a drink. He's never been seen drunk publicly. He's a very temperate man. Patty Leonard and uh, Bantam Lyons, they're in Ivy Day in the committee room and in counterparts in Double Unders. Bottom of uh, 146, some more uh, business about say nothing, Bantam Lyons winked. I'm going to plunge five bob on my own. I'm throwaway. And he's going to win. Finally, uh, Bloom leaves. He's walking towards Dawson Street. Something green. It would have to be spinach, say. He thinks about spinach, cheese, thinking about food. Again, uh, the keys ad at the bottom of 147. Keys, two months if I get... Nanetti two, that'll be two pounds ten, about two pounds eight. Three Heinz owes me two eleven. Da da da. Thinking about buying uh, more clothes for Maui. Then at the bottom, this today, today, not think. Thinking about blazes and button and Maui. Tour, tour of the south then. Molly's tour with blazes. The blind strap, strapling on page 148. Again, I'm, I mentioned how Bloom's concerned about daily dead lives. He's concerned about the seagulls. He, he likes his cat. He helps blind people across the street. This blind person is going to reappear uh, throughout the novel. In fact, in one episode coming up, Molly tosses him some money out the window. Page 149, bloodless, pious face like a fellow going in to be a priest. Priest. These are lines that got Joyce into trouble. Molly and Bloom have not had sex now for 11 years. He thinks of uh, Rudy, his son who died. Uh, in the middle of 149, he's thinking of the post office, must answer. He's thinking about sending Martha some money, too. Send her a postal order, two shillings, half a crown. Accept my little present. Stationer's just here, too. Wait, think it over. So what is going on between Martha and uh, Bloom? Who is Martha? He's thinking about the uh, blind man again. Poor fellow, quite a boy, terrible, really terrible. What dreams would he have not seen? Life a dream for him. Now, at the end of this chapter, we'll really get into uh, Bloom's nervousness because he actually sees Blaze's bowling and he he hides. He's all um, disturbed about it. Mr. Bloom came to Kildare Street. First, I must library. So he's he's wanting to go to the post office. He's wanting to go to the library. He talks about. There's a, um, I'm going to digress a little bit. Bloom's talking throughout this chapter about eating and uh, digestion and even uh, defecation and how it's just uh, the circle of life. But there's a funny part. He, he wonders if gods have to go to the bathroom. And he's wondering if the statues in the uh, museum have anuses in them. And he's going to take a look. He's going to actually... Bloom's a very sly person, too. He does things on the sly. He's already got it planned out. He's going to drop a piece of paper and take a, a look up there. Because he, he can't even imagine the gods not having to eat and go to the bathroom. But he sees... Blazes Bolin. Is it? Almost certain. Won't look. Wine in my face. Why did I? Why did I drink? He's all flustered now. Too heady. Yes, it is. It's him. The walk. Not see. Get on. Making for the museum gate. So he's going to go to the museum before the library. This is a, going to be a minor importance. 
look for something. He starts looking in his pockets like he's, he's busy, he wants to read something. He just doesn't want to uh, have any contact with blazes whatsoever. It's just very curious. Why wouldn't he go up and say, hey, uh, I, I see that you wrote my, my, my wife a letter this morning and uh, in your bold hand. What's up with that? Doesn't he hides from him? Ah, yes, trousers, potato, purse, wear, hurry, walk quietly, more and more, my heart. He finds the soap. He's relieved. Ah, yes, he makes it to the gate. Safe. So, again, if you're uh, like me and you're a Joyce and you just uh, want to get into some more Joyce, like and subscribe, hit me up on Boxer, and we'll go through this. Next, we're out to the National Library and Stevens. Quite as interesting uh, theories on Hamlet. Until then.